So welcome. I hope that was somehow visible. I saw some some errors here on my screen. Uh, welcome to our ninth powwow session at the Global Design Thinking Alliance, uh, the GDTA powwow, our session where we share experiences from our members, design thinking experiences, talking about the latest research, sharing things about the pandemic, actually our experiences in handling that. And uh, I'm happy to welcome today Claudio De Lera. Uh, but uh, I think we have to share some, Steffi, do, you, do we have to share some other with some others yeah there is the netiquette screen so we are, we are i'm welcoming you here to an uh, kind of open session it's actually planned to be 60 minutes a one hour session 30 minutes of presentation through our guest and uh, then another 30 minutes um, to discuss live together with our guest and um, it is meant to be an open Zoom call. That's the reason why we are not using the webinar session. We're using the normal Zoom call. Uh, I would still ask you during the presentation to switch off your video and the microphone for sure during the presentation, but before and after, it's no problem. We want to see you. We want to actually get in touch with you. And uh, it's also a recommendation to hide non-video participants if you like, if you like to have a better view. There is a setting in the video settings to hide video, non-video participants. So you just see the speakers and the people who are talking. And uh, actually also a recommendation to choose between the gallery view and the speaker view to get, a, get the impression you want to have, you want to see all of them. At the beginning or at the end, uh, the discussion uh, changed to the gallery view. And uh, if you just want to see the speaker, change to the speaker view and you'll get the slides also. So um, that is about the instructions. Uh, I talked about the agenda um, and I'm happy to announce Claudio De Lera. Um, he was joining um, and Claudio Lalera is an associate professor on uh, in design thinking, design actually design strategy at the School of Management at the Politecnico in Milano, uh, where he serves as a, also as a co-founder of the Lead-In Lab. He'll talk about that, the Laboratory of Leadership, Design and Innovation. And he's also the director of the Observ Observatory Design Thinking for Business. And uh, his research... Um, is concentrated in the area of design strategy and design thinking. He has published in relevant international journals, such as Journal of Product Innovation Management, Long Range Planning, R&D Management, and so on, International Journey of Innovation Management. And uh, with his design thinking for business observatory, uh, we're, we are in touch uh, since quite a while. Uh, he is a member of, he became a member of the GDTA in 2020, so past year. And I'm happy to have you here, uh, Claudio, as our ninth powwow guest. And I'm looking forward to your talk about transformations in design thinking from creative ideation to critical reframing. Please welcome together with me, uh, with, with me, Please welcome Professor Claudio De Lera. Great that you're here. Thanks for joining. So the stage is yours. Now, thank you very much. And I really hope that you are already able to uh, see my uh, cover page. Uh, and let me also say before starting with the, the speech that in reality it would be a sort of conversation or at least I, I, I will be more than happy in uh, talking with you and discussing about our view around design thinking that I would really thank GDTA for giving me the opportunity to meet such uh, uh, experts around the world. And I'm more than sure that it would be a pleasure to, to share with you what we have done here in Politecnico of Milan in Italy, but also uh, er, what you are doing uh, uh, around the world uh, about the topic that we all love, uh, such as design thinking. And uh, 
If you don't mind, uh, I will start uh, uh, the presentation just uh, uh, explaining a little bit what the Observatory Design Thinking for Business is, uh, because uh, what I'm going to talk to you comes from uh, the research that I didn't develop uh, personally or individually, but I did with the entire team that is running this initiative. That at the end of the day is a, a permanent research initiative uh, created uh, four years ago here in Polytechnico with the aim of uh, mapping how design thinking is evolving in Italy and also having a look around the world, uh, maybe also through the collaboration with GDTA, in order to understand the transformation that design thinking is describing and the subtitle that Uli was already mentioning so from creative ideating to critical reframing is a sort of a provocation that we conclude uh, my presentation. And I would try to, let's say, share with you the reason why we feel that uh, this is one of the relevant transformation. Zen thinking is already living and probably will be even more relevant in the near future. But the observatory basically develop uh, two kinds of activities. On the one hand, uh, we run uh, research supported by private organization. On the other hand, we try to organize events, initiatives, uh, and let me say, disseminate those results that we achieve uh, via research in order to create a national community uh, that uh, would uh, uh, pioneeristically adopt a uh, new interpretation of uh, uh, design thinking. Uh, in the last three editions, let me say the ones that we deal with in the last three years, we initially start to uh, map uh, the design thinking ecosystem in Italy, recognizing uh, those organizations that are adopting design thinking in order to deliver advisory services from those that are using design thinking for internal innovation projects. And we uh, gave also a small look at the startups that are providing a, a digital solution that could empower uh, the design thinking process. In the second edition, uh, we uh, focus more on, in the, on the interplay between design thinking and, uh, let me say, broadly speaking, digital transformation. More specifically, we try to understand how design thinking could allow to humanize uh, uh, those digital technologies that are entering progressively in our lives, such as artificial intelligence, big data, virtual reality, internet of things, and so, so on. Finally, uh, during the last edition, uh, the ones that we uh, ended up just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we try to, let's say, discuss the critiques that recently design thinking is receiving. Uh, and more specifically, we try to let's say, identify the reason why you can love, but also aid this approach in a critical way in order to recognize the peculiar feature that design thinking shows in comparison to alternative innovation frameworks uh, uh, that managers, entrepreneurs, and designers are in any case using, such as agile development, uh, lean startup, or even open innovation. Here you can find a couple of links to, let's say, a small website that we, that we created edition by edition, but they will be distributed even at the end of this seminar and consequently you can eventually surf through uh, the digital content that we uh, have created. Basically each year we publish a booklet uh, that uh, synthesizes the resources that we got and uh, being uh, scholars, we try also to, uh, let's say, uh, transform these data in scientific knowledge. Uh, as you probably know, uh, let's say the, the, the scientific process uh, is usually a little bit slower. Uh, so for example, we have uh, some publication that come from uh, uh, the edition that we had in 2018-19, some others are coming from the previous one. And hopefully <laughs> we will be able also to use the data that we collected in the last edition in order to create uh, a publication, uh, research publication in scientific journal as we have already done in the previous edition. So hopefully uh, through the links that we are going to share with you uh, at the end of the presentation, you will find something that will be valuable also to you in the booklets and the publication that we have conceived so far. But now let me uh, really start with uh, uh, the presentation and uh, I will start from a sort of, uh, again, provocation. We all know being in love with design thinking that in the last 10 years, uh, 
there was an incredible uh, boom around this paradigm, especially managers uh, uh, and entrepreneurs are looking at this and thinking as uh, a new way of dealing with innovation. Here you can find, uh, let's say, a small cover about a, a magazine article published by Financial Times in uh, 2017 claiming that there will be no anymore an MBA program without a design thinking course that in some extent represent, let's say, the, 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 the peak in the hype that design thinking is living. At the same time, uh, being in love with this discipline, we have also to be aware about the fact that uh, some critiques are emerging and uh, scholar practitioners are wondering if uh, uh, design thinking will be able to survive to the hype uh, that uh, has already lived. And uh, this was, let's say, the problem we started from in the last edition about the observatory design thinking for business. Hate or love it. And, uh, you know, I'm quite sure that you cross already through the, 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 the uh, uh, speech that Natasha Jen did uh, in 2017 that probably, at least symbolically, represent the quintessential critique the design thinking uh, has received recently. And uh, in her words, uh, uh, the problem that design thinking is living is connected to the fact more and more is perceived as a sort of uh, toolbox managers can rely on in order to deal with the different categories of projects, uh, basically every kind of innovation projects. And uh, even if, uh, let's say, the, the critique coming from Natasha was quite crude, uh, especially as uh, at, at, at the end of his speech, she was quite... Uh, crude in describing the role that design thinking could have, uh, we have to be aware about the fact that some of those critiques that we uh, have listened in the recent past are, uh, let's say, uh, uh, reasonable, are critiques that I feel the need to take care about, uh, even if uh, we are all aware that there are also ambassadors. Uh, uh, we are quite in touch with uh, Mauro Porcini, Chief Design Officer in PepsiCo. And uh, just one year later, the speech by Natasha Jen uh, during a, a different conference, it was defending uh, design thinking. But in reality, even if uh, the position was, uh, let's say, quite dichotomous in comparison to Natasha Jen, uh, I have to admit that the, the reasoning behind was not so far. Uh, Mauro was uh, similarly to Natasha Jen claiming that design thinking is not a process. And if you will interpret it as a tool, we will lose the essence and the added value that it can bring to uh, uh, the innovation realm. At the end of the day, we have to be honest in saying that uh, the popularity design thinking has gained in the last 10 years was quite proportional with the enormous growth of models and let me say frameworks, uh, graphical representation that we have so far around design thinking. And uh, for those that are quite new to this discipline, it's quite, uh, let's say, uh, 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 difficult to get what the peculiarity design thinking can, can bring in innovation project compared with uh, alternative frameworks and models. This was the basic reason we dedicated to uh, we dedicated the last edition of the observatory to answer these let me say quite naive questions: What are the matches and mismatches uh, that design thinking shows in comparison to alternative innovation frameworks? In order to let's say preserve what design thinking is, recognize the added value that it can bring to innovation, and consequently differentiate it from alternative frameworks that can be used when you are dealing with innovation. And uh, I, I would really, I'm, I'm, I'm really passionate about this topic to the point that I would invite also you in reflecting deeply in what design thinking is specific, what are the distinctive features that it can provide in comparison to alternative frameworks. There is no, let's say, design, design thinking is not good per se. There is a good design thinking, is a bad design thinking. And it's our role to recognize how it can work properly in synergy with alternative innovation frameworks or in a contingent view, recognizing those challenges that can be faced by design thinking, but also those that can't be faced 
through design thinking. And uh, as we used to do every year, we rely on a quite large community in order to have a concrete flavor about uh, uh, the answer to the question I was mentioning a few seconds ago. And more specifically, the data that I'm going to share with you comes from 386 head of organizational units in Italy that deal with the uh, innovation projects during 2020. And more specifically, the sample that uh, we created is quite, let's say, uh, uh, rich and various uh, along different dimensions. First of all, in terms of industry, where those consulting, where those uh, uh, ad are working, uh, uh, as you can see on the top part of the slide, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, quite rich. Uh, around one fourth of our sample is composed by ads coming from consulting industries. But then we have uh, uh, people that come and operate in uh, uh, several industries. Even in terms of job position, we have a quite good uh, a variety, uh, business development, uh, but also people engage in uh, technology, more specifically in digital uh, uh, innovation. But obviously we have a quite good portion of our sample represented by people uh, uh, involved in design department. And finally, we have a smallest piece of people that are employed in marketing function. And finally, the educational background is uh, uh, um, similarly rich. We have a, a quite good portion of the sample coming from a business and management uh, uh, educational background, uh, around 40%. But then we have 20% coming from design education and information technology one, and the rest are uh, significantly distributing and various. So these uh, uh, almost 400 uh, people dealing with innovation project in 2020 gave us the opportunity to analyze not only design thinking, but also let's say portfolio frameworks that can be adopted in dealing with innovation. But before uh, entering in the description about the data we collected and the answer that we got from uh, uh, these uh, uh, people, I would, let's say, engage you and even have a sort of feeling about your knowledge about the Italian uh, contest. Uh, and more specifically, I'm going to ask to you using a, a, a web-based polls that you can already find in, uh, in the chat. Uh, and more specifically, I would like to ask in your view, or let me say in your feeling, what is the Italian industry that is investing more in design thinking projects? So from an economic point of view in your eyes, what's the industry that is spending more, let's say, resources, economic resources in developing innovation projects based on the design thinking uh, uh, paradigm. So I will lead to you a few seconds in order to connect to this uh, platform. You can use simply a browser, so you can access it uh, through your mobile phone, or even the browser on your uh, PC. And uh, on your left, uh, you can find the list of industry that uh, I propose to you as potential answer, moving from automotive, passing through energy, finance and insurance, food and beverage, healthcare, information and communication, manufacturing, public administration, retail, transportation and logistics, and eventually, if you will not find the one that in your eyes is the most, uh, let's say, interested in the same thinking, you can even pick the other answer. You are allowed to give me just one answer, so you have to choose only one out of the industry proposed in these slides, and hopefully technology will be friendly to me in uh, uh, getting your answer. So let's see if you will be so kind in uh, giving to me your uh, feeling. The application seems to work to me. So any, any guess about the most 
interested the industry that is mostly interested in uh, uh, Italian. Uh, uh, wow, it seems that is not working properly. Let me see. Okay, but uh, sorry, it, it seems that uh, something not working properly. Okay, now it's working. Sorry, I don't know what it was. So we have already 30 answers uh, that we can already see. So according to your feeling, information and communication was uh, the industry that spent significantly resources in uh, uh, design thinking project. Uh, and then we have a second uh, industry finance and insurance and finally automotive. Uh, uh, let me say that you are not so far from uh, the reality. Here you can find the, let's say, exact percentages of investment in design thinking projects coming from the industries that we uh, I was mentioning before. More specifically here, you can read the, the data along the last three years, 2018, 19, and 2020. And uh, the, especially the first four industry you can read on your left, energy, manufacturing, finance, finance and insurance and retail are still quite stable, the most interested in uh, design thinking, at least in Italy, with, uh, let's say, strange uh, dynamics, probably due to pandemics that we have identify in, um, in moving from 2019 to 2020, more specifically energy, manufacturing, and finally food and beverage were the ones in uh, uh, showing the, the, the greatest growth in terms of investment in design thinking, as well as us in uh, terms of decrease, uh, automotive public administration and information and communication differently from your answer, the, that was probably the only one not so aligned with the data that we collected, uh, were the ones in uh, decreasing, uh, moving from 2019 to 2020. So the sample that we are relying on is quite uh, rich. And uh, uh, going back to the, 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 the question that we explored in uh, the last edition, we in reality compose two segments. On the one hand, we have half of the sample, more specifically, 187 ads off that declare design thinking as the fundamental approach they adopted in managing the innovation portfolio in 2020. Here you can see the breakdown accordingly to the frameworks that they adopt along the entire year. And averagely, two out of five projects were developed through the design thinking approach. On the other end, we have a second segment that declare uh, design thinking was marginal in their behaviors. And more specifically, they claim that innovation frameworks such as Agile, Open Innovation, and Lean Start were the fundamental one they adopted in dealing with the innovation projects developed in 2020. In this case, they marginally adopt design thinking, even if averagely again, one project out of five was based again on design thinking. And in the following slides, I would compare these two segments of the sample, assuming that on your left, you can have the ads of those organizational units that are mainly specialized in design thinking and they believe in design thinking as the core methodology to deal with innovation, while on your right, you can find a sample that marginally used design thinking as one of the other, let's say, methodology that you can apply in dealing with innovation. And uh, uh, I have to admit that we collected quite interesting data. On the one hand, it seems that uh, the first segment usually adopt design thinking alone. I mean, in order to deal with single projects, they don't mix different frameworks in order to achieve the results, but they embrace design thinking as the holistic methodology that can deal with the entire innovation projects. Just occasionally, 
they combine design thinking with other approaches. And we can read this, let's say, uh, data in several ways, but let me, uh, let's see, at least share with you two possible readings. On the one hand, it seems that design thinking is so, let's say, uh, holistic, that differently from other innovation frameworks, allow to cover great portion of innovation projects. On the other hand, maybe a little bit negative, it seems that those people are specialized in design thinking, are a little bit more close in welcoming alternative innovation frameworks, especially if we compare them with the second segment of our sample. In this case, those people that are specialized in innovation frameworks such as Agile or Open Innovation or even Lean Startup, declare that they frequently use these frameworks alone without the help of design thinking, just frequently and not usually. But sometimes, a little bit more frequently than occasionally, they rely on the combination between these innovation frameworks and design thinking. So again, it seems that design thinking could significantly help and support other innovation frameworks in order to achieve interesting results. And uh, this was to us a first interesting finding in comparing the reading that people have about design thinking. If they are, let's say, expert and specialized in its adoption, or they are quite new to this model. But let me go a little bit deeper again in both segments of our sample. And I will start again from this people specialize in the adoption of design thinking, then we will be back to those that look at this methodology a little bit from far. And more specifically, we uh, had the opportunity measuring the frequency in the combination between design thinking and alternative innovation frameworks to discover that uh, the methodology that more frequently support design thinking in dealing with innovation project is the agile development, a little bit less open innovation, and finally, really rarely lean startup. But it's even more interesting to look at the reason why design thinkers rely on the combination with alternative innovation frameworks in order to empower the capability to achieve the innovation results they are addressing. And more specifically, the agile development usually support design thinking project in accelerating the development of the roadmap. In some instance, uh, the ads that we interview said to us that Zen thinking is significantly appropriate to deal with the front end of innovation, but then they used to combine with agile development in order to be more effective in implementing the solution, especially when they, are, they have to be really quick. Open innovation is sometimes combined with design thinking in order to enrich the problem understanding. As we all know, in order to avoid the risk to be so close to the user, open innovation allows us to get in touch with a variety of stakeholders that could allow us to have a more comprehensive understanding of the challenge that we are dealing with. And finally, lean startup is rarely adopted in synergy with design thinking in order to validate preliminary assumption and consequently collect quickly few measures that can reassure about the assumption usually created in the really beginning, at the really beginning of a design thinking project and more specifically during the emphasize phase. But now let's look at the uh, other side of the coin. So let's look at those people that are not expert in design thinking, but still they are relying uh, on it, even if just uh, uh, sometimes. And more specifically in this case, we can see from the data that we collected that open innovation, or more, let me better say, those managers specialize in open innovation, usually combine this approach with design thinking more frequently than those that are specialized in Agile, and finally, an only in startup. And in this case, considering that we are, let's say, in love with 
design thinking. And in this case, we are looking at the contribution that design thinking could bring to alternative innovation frameworks. So let me say the contribution that we can provide as a community to other communities that still are dealing with innovation. I will start again from you. And hopefully the technology will be slightly more friendly with me. So using the same URL that you have already used in the previous poll, now you can access a second, let's say, uh, uh, questions. And uh, more specifically, I'm going to ask to you if, what's the main contribution that in your eyes uh, uh, design thinking could bring to uh, uh, alternative innovation frameworks, selecting one of the six that I'm proposing. And for a strange reason, uh, the update is not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, real time. So let me be back to one slide, then I will be back again to this. Just waiting for your answer. Choosing between frame innovation challenges, understand user needs, unveil technological opportunities, empower team creativity, interpret user feedbacks, and finally accelerate innovation processes. Let me see if I will be so lucky in, oh wow, now it seems that I'm a little bit less lucky. So let's see if uh, the connection will allow us to see your answer in a while. Otherwise, I'm really sorry with this small issue. Let's have the last try. No, it seems that is not working. Sorry, sorry for this. But uh, I hope that you, you went for the, uh, uh, let's say, alternatives that uh, uh, also according to the uh, uh, managers we meet, uh, we got in, in our research. And more specifically here, you can find the three core contribution recognized by ads of organizational units that mainly use innovation frameworks different from design thinking, they are expecting from design thinking. Um, as you can see here, interestingly enough, uh, those managers that are uh, dealing mainly with open innovation projects look interesting to design thinking because accordingly to them, this paradigm is able to support the discovery of uh, hidden technological opportunities. So the main contribution that they can perceive in design thinking is in differently interpreting the potentialities, uh, the potential that each technology has inside. And consequently, they use design thinking in order to unlock the biases that usually uh, uh, technicians add in uh, exploiting the opportunities provided by emerging or uh, 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 existing technologies. While managers specialize in agile development, uh, appreciate uh, design thinking because it allows them to frame the structure of the initial problem. So for those of you that are really expert, not only in design thinking, but also in agile development, in order to properly organize the sprints that connote the agile methodology, it's fundamental to recognize the architecture that you are dealing with. And they feel that design thinking is particularly valuable in the initial stage in order to frame and structure the problem, the architecture of the problem that you are dealing with in order to properly inform the pipeline of the sprints that you will uh, uh, go through in the agile development. And finally, the lean startupper, so the ones that are uh, in love with this kind of frameworks, perceive value in design thinking because it allows to, let's say, interpret the user metrics that uh, they are used to collect in a, let's say, deeper way. Putting aside to an analytical attitude in reading the collected data, a more humanistic one. And consequently, through design thinking, they are able to get the greatest value you can extract from the data uh, coming from the feedbacks provided by uh, users. So recapping uh, the few, uh, let's say, uh, highlights that I sh share with you about the research that we have done uh, uh, during the last edition of the observatory. And uh, going back to the, let's say, initial provocation that hopefully will be uh, even relevant to you, uh, I would 
say that the new DNA we picture through the research recently concluded by Politecnico Milan says that uh, on the one hand, the same thinking is versatile and it can be adapted in different contexts, not only as the main framework to follow in order to deal with innovation, but it can be also combined with alternative innovation frameworks for specific features. And this is fundamental for two reasons. On the one hand, in order to recognize what is different in design thinking in comparison to others, but also in order to empower our capability to innovate, combining it in the appropriate way, the different approaches that are available to us. Secondly, I have to admit that in this popularization of design thinking that has also collected a lot of critiques, the research highlight the distinctive features and capabilities that I feel we have to nurture and we have to take care about in design thinking. And uh, I try to list them in just three points that represent also the, let's say, final payoff of the presentation that I prepare for the today webinar. On the one hand, uh, I yet admit that probably currently with some of the critiques that design thinking has recently received would push a lot on design thinking as an engine to create ideas, forgetting that since the beginning, design thinking balance the effort both in problem and solution spaces. It seems to me that uh, the glamour around design thinking unbalance the overall perception of its aim in delivering ideas, maybe too much. And today ideas are not anymore the rare resource that we should rely on in order to be innovative. I feel the need to be, let's say, to, to, to go back at the core of the Zen thinking, its capability to apply creativity, not only in generating solution, but also in framing the problem that we are dealing with. And especially the managers and entrepreneurs specializing in alternative innovation frameworks perceive this attitude of design thinkers. I strongly believe on a more constructive view around design thinking instead of a positivistic one. Going back to even Simon, we can claim that problems don't exist, but they are our interpretation about symptoms that we can retrieve. And this step of reframing that usually we don't take care so much is at the core of the value that design thinking could provide. So the first point is let's go back to a more reflective approach in dealing with the reframing of the problem. The second uh, uh, feature that uh, I would uh, underline is uh, uh, the speculative imagination. In our research, we perceive that, uh, especially the managerial, uh, the management community, look at design thinking as a methodology that could allow to solve uh, quickly, uh, let me say in a very efficient way, small problems, while we perfectly know that design thinking was mainly conceived in order to deal with weak and ill-defined problems. And this means that we have to also to take care about uh, long-term implication that our choice could have in dealing with innovation. I believe that, again, the same thing should be back in stimulating, engaging large set of people in organization in imagining for the far future, and then be back to those actions that could allow us to get that future. 
So the speculative thinking that is part of uh, the Zen thinking framework should be revamp in a way in order to declare the distinctive value the Zen thinking could provide in comparison to other way of thinking. And finally, strictly connected to the emergence of uh, uh, digital technologies, uh, uh, we all know that we are in a world where data would be relevant for organization and specifically for innovation processes. But we have to avoid to believe that uh, data could give us directly the direction or even the indication about what would be valuable to people. Humanizing data interpretation, so keeping humans at the center and try to put aside uh, to the pure data we can collect uh, directly from user or even through digital platform, the sensibility and the empathy that connotes this and thinking is the third and fundamental feature that I strongly hope we will take care about in order to uh, claim the distinctiveness of uh, design thinking in comparison to alternative uh, innovation frameworks. And uh, with these slides, I would uh, conclude my uh, talk, hoping that especially the last three messages would be meaningful also to you. And I would be more than happy in uh, uh, not only sharing what we have uh, uh, published as uh, observatory and thinking for business, but also in order to uh, in answering to curiosity or any kind of doubts that uh, you could have. So thank you. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to let's say share our reflection with you. Thank you very much, Claudio. Thank you. And I wish that all of you are in the audience, uh, please switch on your video so that we can see you again. That would be nice. Thank you very much. And then you can add to my applause. Um, that was a, a very excellent presentation. Um, thank you very much. You, you uh, inspired already a, a strong discussion in the in the chat uh, which is which is great you probably didn't have the chance to look at that honestly um, no <laughs> and, and let me just change a little bit here my video settings uh, so now I'm, I'm back again yeah um yeah thanks uh, uh, thanks a lot i think uh, you are doing a great job um actually looking at the at the data there and uh, uh, there was the question if we share if you could share your presentation. Um, I think there is a there is a yes uh, behind that. Sure, sure. And uh, I think if, if I summer, try to summarize some of the questions uh, in the in the chat so far before we move in uh, in the uh, in the live kind of Q and A session, I I think it would be great if you could. Uh, there was a question is why is design thinking compared with the with other innovation frameworks you know could you please elaborate why you com compare design yeah. thinking i think you answered some of the questions already during the talk but maybe uh, since that was a question by several people maybe you can point on that why wh why do you see that where do you see the the differences and the overlaps yeah, yeah, br br brilliant question. And uh, yeah, I, I can share with you that uh, we, we decide to compare this and thinking with alternative innovation framework for a malaise that we have in our stomach. So this and thinking is booming around. And sometimes when uh, a paradigm is so successful, there is the risk uh, that uh, we can believe it can work in any context in facing any kind of challenges. And this is a big risk because it's impossible for any kind of frameworks or methodology. And uh, the big risk that as a community we are living is that uh, pushing so hard design thinking, it will become, uh, let's say, undistinguishable from uh, alternatives. So I think that it's our responsibility in recognizing the context, the contingency, the added value it can bring in comparison to alternative way of dealing with innovation. And uh, just talking about thinking, there are 
different thinking. There is the engineering thinking, there is the design thinking, a, there is the entrepreneurial thinking. There are different way of thinking. And giving a clear boundaries about the space where design thinking could bring value means to take care about this discipline. We are guest editing a special issue in the journal Product Innovation Management with Roberto Verganti and Scott Swan, other two colleagues, exactly about this topic in more or less six months, the papers will be finally out. The, the special issue started two years ago in 2019. And we are more than, let's say, exciting in seeing how innovation scholars look at design thinking as a new wave that will not substitute the previous one, but could enrich the debate around innovation methodologies. And as a community in love with design thinking, we have to be open in recognizing what are the boundaries that we are taking care in order to contribute to others and welcome the contribution that will come from other disciplines. And hopefully the answer will be, was uh, clear enough for uh, the attendees that will make the question. Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you very much, Claudio. Um, there, there is a, a raised hand by Kerstin. Yes, thank you a lot for giving me the opportunity to ask you um, a question, Claudia. First of all, thanks a lot for, for sharing your, your thoughts and, and reflections. Very amazing. And I share lit literally each and every one besides, and maybe that is a misunderstanding on, on my side on what, what you talked about. Um, I definitely also love uh, design thinking as you also do, I think so, after, after um, hearing your presentation. Um, and what I really love uh, is the broadness and richness of, of design thinking, because I, I think you literally can use design thinking for each and every problem. So a, a very large one, a strategic one, a society problem, and also for very small life hacks. And that for me is definitely the, the USP of, of design thinking, so to say. And um, literally, I am trying always to, to blend a lot of other methods with design thinking, for instance, um, Kanban or Scrum or Lean Startup or um, systemic thinking or what, whatsoever. So, um, and I, I wasn't sure about your, especially your last sentences, whether you really think um, there is just one spot for design thinking or whether you think literally each and every problem uh, we, we will face as, as, as a humankind or as a mankind uh, can, can be solved or tackled with, with design thinking. So what, what, what is your view on, on that? My view is that uh, uh, the versatility of design thinking is one of the, let's say, uh, uh, peculiarity of this approach and surely design thinking is significantly more versatile in comparison to many other approaches as, uh, as a consequence as you mentioned uh, you can apply design thinking in a variety of contexts uh, dealing with uh, let's say product innovation but also dealing with uh, social challenges uh, or moving in service area or public service area. So this versatility of design thinking is fantastic, but it doesn't mean that uh, it could be applied in any kind of context. There are some specificity that uh, uh, connote design thinking and we have to take care about. Uh, believing that it could work better than any, any other kind of approaches, independently from the challenge that you are dealing with. Uh, 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 to me, it's the big risk that we can go through as a community, because paradoxically, we will not be open enough to alternative way of thinking, because we have already the one that could allow us to deal with any kind of challenge. So I agree completely with you that uh, versatility or the stability of design thinking make it uh, give us the opportunity to, to let's say, on the one hand, uh, play uh, or uh, uh, 
have fun in different contexts and I'm really happy with them. I love design thinking, especially because it allow me to, to work in different areas. But still from a pure responsibility point of view, I feel the need, challenge by challenge, type of project that I'm dealing with to recognize which are the area where design thinking could work properly and those where it's not so good as other approaches in order to look for those combinations, those synergies that can allow us to, on the one end, reach design thinking. On the other end, let's say, get better results, valorizing the specificity of the different approaches we can rely on. Claudio, may I, may I slightly have a different, a different opinion on that? <laughs> surely, surely. I'm, I'm, because I'm actually here for what, discussing. what we are trying at the School of Design Thinking since uh, nearly 14 years now is really actually also, and one thing is to find out where and what, what areas design thinking does not work. And my opinion to that is actually that I think there is a lot of areas where design thinking was not used yet. Um, and one example is for me, uh, looking at the pandemic, how the governments were, were handling and are still handling the pandemic. In Germany, I don't see design thinking at work at that, at that thing, but it's a I complex to problem. Me, it's to a perfect thing Italy. to work on. How would, you, how, how would you respond in that? Does the Italian government use design thinking for that? <laughs> I was exactly joking. I unfortunately have to admit that even Italian government is not, let's say, properly relying on design thinking in order to deal with the pandemic. But you are perfectly right because there are a lot of contexts where design thinking could provide value and is not properly applied. But if we as community will be able to properly recognize which kind of added value and what design thinking could contribute, also those that are not applying design thinking will be reassured by, let's say, our understanding. While if we would push the idea that we can deal with uh, any kind of project through design thinking, it would be really hard to convince people that are not using design thinking that it can be valuable also to them. So it's the responsibility of those people that are in love with design thinking to, let's say, shape and recognize the peculiarity of this approach in comparison to the other one. In this way, we will be able to enter in those contexts that can benefit from design thinking and so far are not applying it for many reasons. And surely the Italian government is one of those places. Thank you. So there are two, two raised hands. Young Se Kim, first, and then Linda. Young, Young Se Kim, you want to? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Claudio. Excellent uh, presentation. Okay. And I actually asked the question, why are you comparing design thinking with those uh, innovation framework? And for those who are interested in innovation framework, they want to compare what design thinking can do in their innovation effort. So I think what you have done is fit that particular kind of a task. But I found a very interesting part through your findings. Uh, those agile people said, according to you, that the design thinking helps the framing. And lean people said it helps the interpreting uh, metrics. And the innovation people said it allows for them to find the good technological opportunities. It looks like all those three kinds of people found the design thinking does their core stuff. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, so th th this, this gives the, the, what is the intrinsic power of design thinking? For example, the design thinking process can be compared with the design reasoning process, what uh, uh, Dost uh, talked about formulating, moving, representing, and evaluation, and also uh, the Don uh, Don Shan's framing, moving, and reflection. Okay, but 
I actually use uh, Professor Mackin's design, design thinking process. Professor Mackin was a professor well before David Kelly at Stanford. Okay. And he described visual thinking process composed of a seeing, imagining, drawing. Okay. But if you try to pay attention on formulating part, probably seeing is going to be important. If you try to generate a lot of a new speculative imagination, probably you may pay attention on imagining. If you'd like to get a lot of uh, the feedback from the users, maybe you want to pay attention on drawing that could be interpreted as a prototyping. So in other words, our the thinking process deals with those three basic uh, tasks in a way. And this design thinking process or visual thinking process allows that utilize those three core uh, elements of a thinking. But as you feel, if you feel the seeing is important, maybe through the iteration of a seeing, imagining, drawing, seeing, imagining, drawing, you may be able to focus on the seeing part. If you think that generating new imaginative solution part is important, ideation is important, while you are doing those seeing, imagining, drawing, you can pay attention on the imagination part so that you can benefit from it. So maybe the power of design thinking is that as the thinker, as the designer wants to solve their own problem, all these three kinds of uh, uh, the, the thinking activities are all required and it is all interacting, but you can actually walk on in a very fluid manner, in a very interactive manner, so that you can pay attention to what you think is important while using the other kinds of uh, thinking to, uh, so that they can provide a complementary uh, role. So it may be, I mean, as I look at the, your, those uh, three thing drawing, which is exactly the same as the seeing, imagining, uh, drawing three things that I used. So I was thinking about that. What is, what is your uh, thought on this kind of a view on design thinking? Yeah, uh, firstly, going back to the very initial question that you mentioned, we ask to people that are not, let's say, so in design thinking, what's the value that they perceive in design thinking, because we would love to avoid it, to talk internally in a community, but we would love to see how the external community look at the design thinking one. Okay. And you are perfectly right in saying that, uh, surprisingly to us, they were really happy on the one hand in sharing with us that they feel design thinking could be really cool in specific, let's say, uh, benefits in providing specific contributions to the innovation process that they are already dealing with. And you're perfectly right in saying that it was even surprising to see that those that are more in the open innovation framework on in the agile or in the lean startup mentioned to us different features, recognizing design thinking that are complementary. And if you will pull the three, let's say, ingredients coming from open lean startup and agile you can really recognize the the, the, the let me say the, the the core of design thinking so the capability to interpret user the capability to to frame the problem that you are dealing with the capability to forward looking so to imagine something that is quite far from us and uh, this was quite cool to us because it allows to, let's say, not only talk on design thinking through the eyes of those that are already expert about, but allow us to look in a, let's say, naive way, how managers that are not expert in design thinking, look at this methodology as a sort of addiction, as an added value on top of what they are already doing. And, uh, uh, I think that we have already reached the goal in saying design thinking is relevant. They are already understood. We have a community of managers that are not expert in design thinking, already welcoming design thinking. Now is the moment to specify 
on top of being relevant in which kind of specific contribution and benefit design thinking could support them. And let me say, this is a little bit more critique. We have also to be open in recognizing what we can get from them in terms of enrichment to the design thinking. And the data that we collected, at least in Italy, so I'm not talking about the worldwide, it seems that paradoxically, the ones that are more expert in design thinking has a little bit less open to those that are expert in innovation frameworks in welcoming alternative way of dealing with innovation. Yeah, yeah as you said earlier, yeah, okay. But but what, what is your thought about my, uh, the, the conjecture that the, what is the real intrinsic value of a design thinking process? Why, for example, that as those three kinds of experts said that design thinking is helpful, they are more most important tasks, but that that is a very uh, the optimistic that design thinking can be kind of a, a steered as you like. If you think this is important, maybe using design thinking you can make a payoff for that particular area. Maybe that's the the kind of a virtue that design thinking process possess intrinsically so that we can pay attention on those kind of areas what we think important yeah to me it is not too optimistic this is uh, the, the future that i see so if we will be able to focus on these three features that are, at the end of the day for those of us that already uh, are in the design thinking reasoning are at the core of this approach if you will be able to be stick there in being designers in a constructivistic way not in a positivistic way in being able to reframe what we are looking at more than believing that what is there could be fixed with the solution so if we will create what will be meaningful to people instead of just fixing what is not working right now we will be able to, on the one end, grow the value of design thinking. On the other end, we will be able to serve even other communities. Yeah, yeah. maybe we can talk offline more so that uh, uh, we can our, actually our peers can. Yeah, <laughs> to, to, to we be can a actually, more than we're a little bit over time, so I don't want to yeah. sorry, don't want to stop the discussion here. And as you know, as the ones uh, know who have been here more often, uh, we we have the official part of the 60 minutes oh, of the powwow. And then after that, for all of you who are still interested, Claudio was uh, saying already that he has some more minutes uh, to spend. And there are two yeah. other raised hands and I don't want to don't want to uh, kick them off. No, I just want to hear okay. what uh, what uh, Linda and Kerstin have to say as, as well, uh, as Yong say. Uh, but I would like to officially end here uh, the also the the live uh, streaming to YouTube and also later on the the uh, the recording here on Zoom. Um, and uh, just to announce our next powwow, it will happen on May 15th with uh, Professor Matt Parkinson from uh, Penn State University. He's also a member of the Global Design Thinking Alliance, um, starting member already. And uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. But I would like to thank officially first Claudio for his inspiring talk here. Thank you very much. Big applause to you and thanks. Th th thanks to you. I will be here for more minutes, as mentioned by Uli. And I'm really sorry if I'm not, uh, I was not able to answer also to the question in the chat uh, during the presentation. So thank you very much for both the questions and the discussions.